Border, border, border. I just had lunch with Speaker Mike Johnson, a great friend, a classmate. We came in together, and that's what he said. He said he wished we could get us all a T-shirt that said border, border, border. In my office this week, no matter what the question is, the answer is secure the border. In fact, I think Speaker Johnson has been talking to some of the same people I've been talking to. I had the great time in my life this past seven, ten days back home in Kansas. I got to spend time with my grandchildren, teaching them how to hunt and fish and sled in a very welcome ten-inch snow. I got to see a lot of friends and family members and share what's going on in their lives and get caught up. But no, where, no matter where I went, the number one worry people have is about the concern of the safety and security of their own family. In Kansas, the heartland, the middle of the country, the middle state, people are concerned about their own safety and security, and why wouldn't they be? Since Joe Biden was sworn into office, over 10 million immigrants have come into our border, and over 1.5 million gotaways have occurred. 10 million people crossing our border illegally, one and a half million gotaways. This crisis at our nation's border is the number one most immediate threat to our safety and security. This is a true, clear, and present danger to our nation. Just think about these numbers. Fentanyl is now the number one killer of young adults in America. It kills a Kansan every day. Nearly 300 young Americans are dying every day from fentanyl poisoning. Not to mention what's going on with human trafficking, the growth of the cartel, and the violence, as my dad, the police officers, taught me, as the violence always follows the drug trafficking. But it seems like these numbers are falling on deaf ears at 600, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Just look at September, October, November. These look like they're all going to be record-setting months for the number of people crossing our border illegally in, this, in these months. But yet, for some unknown reason, the White House wants to take border security off the table in the supplemental bill. Why? That's what people are asking me back home. Why? That's the question Americans want to know. They point out the facts that we know well up here. Under this administration, we've seen 279 known terrorists try to cross our borders, more than 24,000 Chinese nationals, not to mention some 80,000 aliens of interest from countries like Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, and Syria who have breached our borders. This is indeed an invasion on our border, and every American is now paying for it. As a matter of fact, it's now costing Americans nearly $500 billion a year. Let me say that again, $500 billion a year to house and take care of these illegal immigrants. Can you imagine how many Border Patrol officers, how much technology, how many drug dogs, and yes, how much fence could we build for half a trillion dollars a year? Again, that's what Americans are asking me back home. It's time for this chamber to step up to the plate and do what is right for the American people. For such a time as this, we need leadership. And I'm grateful, I'm proud, and the American people are glad to hear the leadership on this side of the aisle are saying, we will deny cloture on this supplemental bill if there's not meaningful border security. This concept of a supplemental bill without taking care of our national security, of sending over $100 billion to foreign lands without addressing our own national sovereignty, well, it actually reminds me of what Abraham Lincoln once said. You can fool all the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. Let my message today be clear. Let's bring on the hard work, late nights, weekends. That's what Kansans do. We work hard. We have those values of a hard work ethic, and I'm certainly willing to do just that, to work hard to get to border security. Look, on this side of the aisle, we're not going to waver. We're not going to quit. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to secure our border and to get this right for once. And I urge every Republican to vote down cloture of this outrageous supplemental package unless we see true, meaningful border security included. Now, we've got solutions that this body can send to the president's desk today that wouldn't cost a dime. 
Changing the asylum policy alone could result in as many as 75% less people entering our nation illegally. 75%. If we just turn off the siren of asylum, we can cut back on those crossing our border some 75%. That would free up the border patrol officers to do their job that they were hired to do. Catching the bad guys, stopping the fentanyl, stopping the human trafficking, rather than playing nursemaid to nearly 10,000 illegal people every day. And also from a policy standpoint, we have to limit the president's abuse of his parole powers, which has enabled over one and a half million immigrant parolees to enter our nation under his watch. Our insistence that these measures be included in a supplemental bill are not partisan. They're not hard right distractions, as been alleged, but it's an attempt to protect the lives and well-being of the Americans that elected us and our families and to assure the sovereignty of this great nation. This is a national security issue, not an immigration issue. It's imperative, it's a must that any supplemental bill includes provisions to address these border issues. Any package agreed upon by all or some of the Senate Republican conference must actually be effective at controlling our borders. A measure that is advertised as stopping the torrent of illegal migration but is not in practice would be a devastating blow to the, to the credibility of Republican senators on this issue over the long term and unacceptable to the people we represent. This is why I urge every Republican in this body to vote no on cloture on any bill that does not at a minimum include policy changes that meaningfully address the flood of illegal immigration at our southern border. Thank you, Madam President. I yield back.